Hello and welcome to this class. Today we'll discuss the topic unique features of construction projects. This is uh, from the first module and the book that I'll follow for today's video is Construction Project Management which is written by Kumar Neerajha. So what we'll discuss today, we'll discuss three topics. First, we'll try to understand what is the importance of knowing unique features. Then very briefly, we'll discuss nine unique features of construction projects and we'll end with a summary. So first, let us try to understand why it is important to understand unique features. Take the example of say an aeroplane. What are the unique features of an aeroplane that comes to your mind? Well, it's quite fast. It can travel from one place to another and it doesn't matter what's there in between. It could be a busy street, it could be a large desert, or there could be many seas in between, but the aeroplane moves from its origin to destination quite fast. For another example, if you take an auto rickshaw, what are the unique features that comes to your mind? The first thing is that you can enter an auto rickshaw right from your house and the auto rickshaw driver will drop you just in front of the destination or wherever you want to go. So in case you want to travel from a particular place to another place, what all should you take to consideration? We will try to understand what is the distance from the origin to destination. Then you will assess how, how much time you have to travel from origin to destination. So once you have the details of the travel or the need of the travel, then you can look to different options like an aeroplane, an auto rickshaw, a train, a bus or a boat or a combination of all these. So when you make a decision uh, for any action, you have to first understand the context and then you will have to look for the different ways uh, by which you can achieve the particular task. So are there any problems when uh, we do not know the unique features? So there are many cases in which our decisions can go wrong when we do not have a proper understanding of the context. Uh, I'll just show you a, a small example. So imagine the last summer I watched a, a lot of um, police movies. I got a lot, I got uh, very much inspired by the movies. But uh, I as a teacher, what can I do? Well, I try to learn a few lessons from them and then you can see how I took the class after watching that movies. Yo, tell me the habitat of Pila Globosa. Stand up with the teacher, ask your question. Tell. Now, answer my question. Where do you find Paila Globosa? In marine water or fresh water? Tell me. Come on. Fresh water and the Tonanda. Seriana. Ella in Gatalo. In Nadia Vaitana, he always chose the Nutra Marino. Sit down. Very good. So, what can we understand from this? A gun in the hand of a policeman is good. He can use it for the good of the society. But when it comes to the hand of a teacher, well, no one expects him to use a gun. And when he uses a gun, uh, it leads to confusions all around. And it's not, never, not going to give the desired effect that a particular teacher wants from it. So now let's um, try to understand the unique features of construction projects. Uh, we will be discussing nine unique features of construction projects. So let's go through it one by one. The first one um, is it's a one time activity and it must be performed correctly the first time every time. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. So this is a 2016 uh, newspaper clipping uh, where our Palariotum flyover was inaugurated for the first time. That was in 2016. And within a few months, there were reports that there are uh, potholes in the road, in the flyover. And within two years, um, 
there were reports of cracks being developed over the flyover and um, this is a 2021 clipping where the Palayarivatam bridge was reopened after reconstruction. So which other industry do you think could have gained this much public attention for not performing an activity correctly the first time? So the second point, complexity. It is multidisciplinary because it involves a set of interrelated tasks to be done by specialists. Let us consider the case of a building construction. There are many stakeholders involved. There is an architect, structural consultant, project management consultancy, civil contractor, quantity surveyor, electrical designer, HVAC designer, escalator, elevator, plumbing, firefighting, landscape and many others. Now we'll look to a small example where, where we can see this interrelatedness of these different specialists. Let's take one parameter, room height. So for an architect, a room height uh, mainly means aesthetics. For firefighting guy, it's safety. Higher uh, room height can determine the way fire spreads along a particular building. HVAC designer, for him, a higher room height means higher air conditioning load for a contractor or someone who installs AC duct for him false ceiling space is very important for a quantity surveyor it's material quantity for a PMC it's again cost or coordination issues and for escalator and elevator guys it's fabrication details so what we see is that when an architect things of changing the room height for some reasons he also has to think about the interrelatedness of the particular aspect called room height because there are other disciplines like firefighting HVAC and quantity surveys or PMC many of them are involved with the same aspect okay so let's move to the next point high cost and time for execution so, so this is a newspaper clipping uh, Dulkar Salman stopped by cops for driving his 2.43 cro crore Porsche Panamera on the wrong side of the road. So 2.43 crores for a car is a high cost. But he actually was traveling through Alapura bypass which cost 340 crore rupees and 41 years to complete. So I've just given this example to show you a comparison and uh, to tell that there is a high cost and time for execution of construction projects. Then high risk of failure. There are a lot of uncertainties involved with construction projects and failure here uh, doesn't just mean the falling off of buildings. Uh, falling off buildings could happen due to uncertainties in the, ge in the geological conditions or they could be things that we didn't expect like an earthquake or a tsunami uh, which could lead to failures of the buildings and there are other types of failures like the Alpura bypass which took 41 years to complete there were problems with the land acquisitions there were many delays and in, in some cases projects which started off could end prematurely because of these difficulties so we'll move to the next point, difficulty in defining quality standards. All projects are unique and there are different quality expectations on different projects. Mainly because projects, um, there could be differences in the place, the climate, the utility, utility of the projects and the expectations are different for different clients. So even if we have standards for quality for a specific project it's always difficult to define quality standards the next point is uniqueness of people relationship people relationship is quite important in construction projects we said in the earlier slide that it's difficult to define quality standards then how do construction projects work it all depends on a lot of trust between different stakeholders so people relationship ha has an important place in construction projects and it, another aspect of people relationship is that the relationship are usually short term in nature because 
most of the stakeholders are not involved in the project right from the beginning till the end. They are a part of a project when they have something to contribute to the project. When their part is over, they leave the project. So the stakeholders do not have a very long time to build the relationship, but the time period is very limited. The next is feedback mechanism. What is a feedback mechanism? Feedback mechanism means you can't separate out the input and the output. Here we have a set of parameters which are a bit interlinked. There are many feedback mechanisms that we can find in construction projects, but here I am taking one example that I found in a paper. Here, schedule variance. When a project manager feels that, or when a project manager finds that the present work rate uh, or the present status of the work is far behind the schedule or when the sh schedule variance is high, he usually goes for more overtime. And with more overtime, the task productivity is higher and with higher task productivity, the schedule variance reduces. But there is another cycle over here at the top. A project manager should be aware of this cycle too before he make decisions. What is that cycle? When there is more, more overtime, there is more fatigue. And when there is more fatigue, there is more need for rework. And there, when there is more need for rework, there is less task productivity. So here, overtime is something which was taken to increase the task productivity. But here, in another cycle, what we see is that it has reduced the task productivity. So while making decisions as a project manager, you have to be aware of the feedback, feedback mechanisms. The next point is lack of experience of client or owner. The area of expertise of a construction project owner need not be in construction. So there are many people who own a house, but are they all civil engineers or related to civil engineering in some way? May not be. So uh, in, in a similar manner, when we con consider huge buildings, say buildings that are owned by software companies, the specialization of the software companies is in software, but they need a building. So they spend money and they construct a building. So we can see that there is a lack of experience of client or owner in most of the construction projects. And the last point is untrained workforce. Usually we have untrained workforce, the mason, the labor, um, the carpenters usually who work in construction projects, they're not given a formal training. Why? It would have been better if they were all given training, but who would give them the training? Usually in projects, large companies, they approach labor contractors who may arrange a pool of labors for doing a particular task. So once the particular task is over, um, people are no longer associated with that project or the company. So a, a large company, uh, for them, the, uh, these workers, the workforce is just temporary in nature. So for them, uh, it doesn't make sense for them to train these workers. At the same time, uh, for when we look from the workers' perspective, uh, there are many who are part-time workers. They, there are many who are associated with agriculture. And when they, don't, when they do not have agriculture in their particular area, they usually migrate to other places to do concession related activities. So those were the nine points. So if I can summarize what we have looked today, uh, we initially looked the importance of understanding unique features and then we looked to nine points or nine unique features of concession projects. Uh, and it is these nine projects that you should remember after this class. These nine points should stay in your mind uh, even after uh, completing this class. So I'll just read once more a construction projects. They, it's a one time activity. It's complex. There is high cost and time involved. There is a high risk of failure. There is difficulty in defining quality standards, uniqueness of people relationship, feedback mechanism, lack of experience of client or owner and untrained workforce. Okay, thank you.